Dr. Abhishek, you know, many investors, they've shied away from passive investing earlier, owing to the perception that returns pale in comparison to those generated through active investing in the long run. We've, we've debated on this as well as to how the actives, you know, the fund managers can, can sort of boost alpha from the short term periods and make it as a far more attractive option than passives. Your take on what's what's going on currently? So Indian market has always been, you know, um, three steps forward, two steps backward. So, you know, three years, you'll get fantastic returns, one year of flat return and the fifth year, perhaps you'll, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll have a very, very difficult period. And Mahesh was just mentioning in the previous uh, session that market is more discerning now. One has to be very, very careful about what stocks you get in, uh, what sort of pricing is happening in the market, what sort of sectors are you going to get in. So given that sort of a backdrop, you know, in a broader portfolio, one has to actually see uh, what are the right spots to get in. And, and as Kostu mentioned, now there is a reasonable uh, bouquet of products which is available in passives. If you were to actually look at performance uh, of these passive products versus their active peers, there is also a fair bit of research which is available, uh, which proves that over a longer period of time, uh, this outperformance is, is quite challenged. In, as markets become deeper, as they become more evolved and developed, uh, beating a benchmark, you it's not you know sort of taken for granted. You know, there was a decade of 2000 to 2010 when we never even used to think about what is the benchmark. The benchmark was the average performance of the peer set. In 2000 to 2015, maybe the benchmark started becoming more relevant. In the last three years, perhaps, uh, now, if you were to look at the most popular report out there, which is PIVA report, one year, three year, five year, even you know, even up to a ten year period, the top performing idea is an index fund. Eighty percent hmm. plus active funds underperform their benchmarks. It's it's not a you know uh, it's not a hidden fact anymore. And with you know all my colleagues here and uh, elsewhere in, in in the digital side, the the uh, you know the explosion of information that has happened investors are now even more aware of the fact that it's not active security selection which gives you returns it's actually your asset allocation which explains more than 90 percent of your portfolio so using passive products like etfs as tools to build your portfolio build the right asset allocation you can actually generate far more stable returns lower risk and maybe even outperform markets over a period of time um, and, and clearly, if you were to see the numbers which are now starting to happen, passive industry is growing at more than 60% per annum over the last maybe about three to four years. And hopefully the trend will continue. While the broader industries still continue to grow at, you know, 20 and odd. Now, if you, the wider benchmark to look at is actually the new folio edition. And recently a data point has come in from Amphi that ETFs have now become the fifth largest in terms of investor folios, displacing mid-cap as a category. So the point that I'm making is that investors are now, thanks to you know the digital revolution, uh, becoming more aware, uh, decision-making is becoming easier. I would tend to believe that you know the past where investors used to focus only on returns, maybe even going forward, uh, they will focus on returns, but I think risk is now starting to play a bigger role Asset allocation is becoming more prominent and a wider bouquet where people want to be in control using these tools as part of their portfolio is going to become more relevant. All right. And your response to some commentators saying that, you know, passives have removed the fun out of investing considering it's on autopilot. Your thoughts, Abhishek? Uh, one can say that, you know, uh, it, it's removed the fun out of fund managers. But I would still say that, you know, it provides ample uh, you know room for creativity for investors you can use passes the way you want you have etfs you have index you have fofs um and you have now wider asset classes earlier you used to look at only indian equities a large cap mid cap and a small cap fund and you are done uh, today you have you know an sdl in fixed income you have a liquid fund um, you have thematic etfs you have uh, sectoral uh, strategies going on you can build the portfolio the way you want all right, DIY for investors. Uh, Kanika, let me get you in. Considering so many options have been listed out from exchange traded funds, fund of funds, index funds, so many options in the passive funds category in India, it can be tricky for investors. So, uh, what are the things that investors should keep in mind when choosing a passive fund? Your thoughts on that? 
Yeah. So uh, even before that, uh, you know, you said uh, it takes the fun out of investing, but just investing is not supposed to be fun. The more boring it is, the better. I, I think that everyone <laughs> just forgets. Uh, in the last two years, everyone been sitting at home and thinking this is a game. Please let it be boring. <laughs> so that was just uh, sorry. I, I had to say that. Uh, but uh, back to you know, what are you supposed to look at? Uh, so two parts to it. One is actually you know, what are the things you look at when you buy an ETF or choose a house? Uh, four things. Uh, look at the the average daily traded volume. Uh, what you're trying to solve for when you're choosing an ETF is essentially how liquid it is, uh, right? So how easy it is for you to buy it, and then how easy it is for the ETF to then buy the underlying securities or, or you know issue those uh, you know ETF units to you. Um, the other is of course tracking error. All of this is part of the same. Uh, basket of is there sufficient liquidity within the underlying? So uh, when you do, for example, a Nifty ETF, that's much much easier to do because Nifty stocks are very easily traded. Uh, there's enough liquidity in there. There's a lot of depth in that market, uh, which is why you don't find that many Nifty 500 uh, ETFs at the moment, right? Because liquidity dries up very quickly uh, the lower you go. Uh, so average daily traded uh, volume uh, within the ETF. Uh, what is your tracking error? That's the second one, which is how closely does the ETF mimic the index? Right? So, so the idea is that when you're saying you're buying a Nifty and Nifty does 10% this year, uh, how, what is your ETF doing? Is it doing 9.9 or is it doing you know 7? Uh, if it's doing 7, it's a very, very poor ETF. It's not able to track its index correctly. Uh, and uh, the third thing, of course, is cost. Uh, the whole idea of buying an ETF is to be able to at least generate you know base equity returns. Uh, and there is no rocket science here. You're buying an index, your cost should be the lowest. Uh, so, so you know, in any case, in the US, we've seen a race to the bottom. Uh, ETFs are now free, uh, but but uh, I think we're a little far away from that because uh, you know ETF houses, Fidelity, etc., have different ways to generate uh, money outside of just charging customers. Uh, but it is a race to the bottom. It will increasingly go down. Uh, it is very important to see what is the cost you're paying uh, on an ETF that you are buying. One and two, continue to track it. There is a little bit of a uh, bait and switch happening at the moment where uh, you know fund houses are doing NFOs at you know cheap costs and then six months later suddenly the the cost is going up so continue to track how much you're paying for your ETFs uh, you know that is the it's critical you should not be paying too much uh, right and lastly uh, you know I, I I would urge most people to start at least thematically or in in different different pockets start looking at ETFs uh, for us, uh, you know, if I wasn't running upside and using rules to invest, uh, my large cap allocation would be ETFs. Uh, it is very, very difficult to find alpha uh, within the Nifty. There is no reason to be paying someone to uh, be buying HDFC Bank for you, uh, right? Just just buy an ETF and, and make sure that uh, that's really how you're taking those kind of exposures. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's not just ETFs. There's a whole bunch of different products that end up doing some version of active ETFs. Uh, you know, small cases are... Uh, uh, you know, around now and, and doing very interesting things on creating baskets or themes around which you can invest. Uh, so that allows you to have a little fun and, you know, say, okay, maybe I think after this budget, uh, I want to buy an infra sort of uh, small case. So, so, you know, you can create baskets and buy different types of baskets. But again, uh, you know, stay away from too much active investing and try and go closer to themes or, or indexes. Peer pressure has always been a part and parcel of the investment culture. If you see a bunch of people, say, doing small case investing, you will run away and do that. Any words of advice, Karnika, to those kind of investors and also words of advice to the braver kind of investors? Right. So, uh, so uh, you know, I think someone else uh, mentioned on the panel how much more mature the market has gotten over the last couple of years. I I'm surprised, uh, you know, retail is far smarter than, uh, you know, where generally giving it credit for uh, their buying the dip. Uh, best investor education that's happened in the last year is buy the dip. After mutual funds saying, yeah, this was the best thing that, you know, people have been taught. Uh, so I don't think everyone is, you know, panic selling, uh, you know, SIPs are not drying up. So one is there is a, a, a the, the investor is a lot more discerning now. Uh, two is uh, passives are a great way to dip your toes uh, into investing. As we see more financialization of savings, you will see pockets where passives play a larger role, like I was saying, within large caps. Uh, other than that, there will still be a very, very large role for actives, for uh, you know, people to be taking large mid-cap exposure uh, or, or things like that. And then, of course, thematics, etc., active ETFs, if you will, where the, the braver souls will start to venture out. An investor education and awareness initiative of Aditya Birla Sun Life Mutual Fund. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.